welcome to the Vodafone Big Top 40 web chat with the script. Hey, 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 hey. All right, camera, lads. This camera, this uh, here. All three. Uh, here. All of them. All, them. all around you. All around you. Down. But here mainly. Okay. Here mainly. Okay. Here mainly. Yeah. So loads of people have been tweeting us, getting involved. Yeah, awesome. Because uh, they want to, you know, you guys have never done this uh, for us before. No. So no, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, wicked. so lots of people have been getting involved because they want to know lots of things. So, uh, Loz wants to know, what's your standout memory from filming the Superheroes video? Um, it would be at the end of the video where you hear me jamming along with the people all the, that were all behind me. Um, they all start singing this, I don't know what it was, it was like a tribal chant. Oh, wow. And as I was playing, I started to match on the drum kit what the rhythm of what they were playing. Um, and that was really very interesting because I'd never done anything like that before in that situation. And they were so close to me as well. So they just start jamming, you know, in between takes. You're sitting there, so I, of course, I, you don't give a drummer drumsticks and leave him sitting on a drum kit and tell him just to be quiet, you know. Yeah. So I'm just like tapping away, and um, they start having a riff, a riff off. It was very, very, very cool. What a beautiful moment! Yeah, it was mm. great. Wow, what were you guys doing, just joining in at the back? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we were. We decided to grab microphones and sing along. Yeah, you know, we can yeah, ever say, if there's ever a jam going on, wow. any, any kind of hoo-ha, we're involved. You know, so yeah, what a yeah, we're straight moment. in. It was cool. Amazing. Uh, Yasmin wants to know what are the standout songs from a new album and why. Standout song. Yeah. Um, a song called No Good and Goodbye, um, I think is a real standout song. It's something that is not typical script sound. Okay. Um, I think uh, we've really stretched the sound on that song and um, I've done some things in that we've we've not even tried before. So I think... Give us a clue. What like? What well, it's simple. It's really nerdy music stuff. Oh, okay. it's, Yeah, it's just it's silly stuff from how we recorded it to, you know, how we wrote it. and we, Chord we, changes. Chord changes. It, so just probably, just probably... Yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit style. geeky. Yeah, <laughs> geeky. I put you to sleep. But that's song okay cool uh the script italy wants to know if you could only listen to one album for the rest of your life what would it be and why grace jeff buckley um because it's just an amazing album and he's yeah. a great singer uh, or he was um it's amazing i uh, probably the beatles probably sergeant peppers yeah good lonely hearts club album I, I loved it that was great just because it you know encompasses everything so much yeah. of a journey in there as well yeah and you hear pretty much every instrument that there was ever made all yeah, in their day in the life. If I could pick David Bowie's greatest hits, only because it was an album, <laughs> it was an album, um, and it was came long after uh, he'd released music. And for me, it's it's like um, it's like having your, um, your your playlist on shuffle. And it's it, it the way his music is, it naturally just jumps around so much because of the the genres he just he had freedom to go into. And it reminds me of how contained music musicians are nowadays. You can't yeah. really jump those genres or people judge you. He had that total freedom and wrote great songs in it. And for me, having and that uh, variety is also great. Yeah, he almost really didn't care, did he? No, he didn't. He and you know, he, he, he even come out. Who, who could come out with it as an artist and then suddenly just change and say, "No, I want everyone to call me Ziggy Stardust for a while." Yeah, and, yeah. You know, like for me, <laughs> that, if I start doing that around here, I think we like, should try okay, alter okay, ego <laughs> band. You know, yeah, we should give it a go. But you guys, uh, yeah, do it. Change your names. What would you be? What would your Ziggy I, uh, Stardust <laughs> names be? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Probably the, the we joke at home because a lot of people when we first come out used to call us the Irish Police. Oh, yeah, wow. and that which okay. I thought would be funny calling us the Gardaí. The Gardaí. <laughs> <laughs> you should try it. See if anybody knows. We'll give it a bash. Uh, the script Italy. She's got another question. Uh, what's the weirdest thing that you've eaten on tour? Mm. It would be. Um, I went to. Um, a hunger, it was a, a barbecue in it was Japan we went to remember and I, I was in the middle of eating this thing and the guy told me oh that's cow's tongue I'd uh, never yeah, had that I, that, that person was me I told them it was cow's tongue yeah I nearly puked at the table I'll tell you I was very what strange. you'd ordered it and then you I know they were it. saying oh, right. you want to try some of our local foods and I was like yeah cool let's have a go this and he didn't tell us what it was just try it you know so I thought okay I'll give it a go and while I'm eating it then I was told were you enjoying it at the time too no not really it was a bit tough it was a bit raw <laughs> it was a bit tongue tied we just we decided to have a bit of fun in a place mm. <laughs> in, in a place called Cairns in uh, or Cairns in uh, in Australia, mm. yeah. and they treated us to. Uh, they said, you know, you want to get it all over with in one go. So they had crocodile, they had swordfish, they had kangaroo, they had koala. Basically everything oh, on your agenda. How did you list. feel the next day? <laughs> it, it was well, apart from the guilt, um, <laughs> Indiana Jones. <laughs> we, we, me and Dan sat oh. down. And they had it all on one plate for us, so we got a chance to literally try. It's like a bush tucker trial. I think it, oh, that's geez. what it felt. Yeah. And, uh, is there anything awful on there? Snake was disgusting. Snake was so rubbery I don't know if anyone's ever tried snake but it's like you know people come it's like chicken it's not like chicken it's like uncooked chicken maybe chicken. but it's it's just it's so rubbery it's it's strange <laughs> Ricken. Mm. what about yourself what's the weirdest thing you've eaten I was there for all of them oh, for all yeah. of those yeah, all as well. yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah probably the cow's tongue was the, the most cow's tongue yeah because we were told it was beef it was only afterwards I was like that's really nice yeah, what it's is it's just it? not from the area where the beef comes yeah. from on the beef yeah, situation yeah, technically it's, yeah. I guess it still is uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Hannah wants to know what's your favourite song to perform live 
Mm. Um, Do you have one? Or does it change all the time? Nah, just g- gigs in general. I think we just have favourite shows now yeah. Yeah. as opposed to just songs. Okay. Um, there's so many magic moments that uh, maybe it's not even us, but the crowd when they start singing. I love anyone, anywhere and anyone who goes to a show and sings. Yeah. You know, I love it because they just join in and get lost in what's going on. Probably for the first time is, a, is an amazing moment. Hall of Fame's always good buzz. Hall of Fame's brilliant. Manic you won't feel a thing's great because it's a, you know, there's a build up and a nice Actually, intro yeah, to it. Yeah, you won't yeah, feel a thing. Really I, cool. I, I get into the crowd, I spend the whole song trying to make my way. I literally get in the front row and I try and make my way all the See way how to, the far back, you can get. to the back of the stadium. Yeah. How's that doing that? It's still, in America Have you got any scars? Really well. um, <laughs> he yeah, won't go to the yeah. gym. We keep saying just go to the gym but he won't. He wants to go running out into the audience. So. <laughs> any scars? I had a, um, a guy in Brussels grab my private parts. Yeah, grab his muscles. Yeah. I mean I imagine I, it's weird it hasn't happened a lot more I guess. But it doesn't, he doesn't, the women do it the all the time but it's the guys. <laughs> When the guys do it, it's just offensive. You, get you know, caution if you do that. it gets weird. Ish, don't think so. Um, UK the script Dan's wants to know what's your favourite type of fast food. Mm, favourite type of fast food. Favourite type of in and out burger. Food. I'm not good oh, at this. This, this oh. depends on what country you're God. country you're in. Okay. If we're talking about UK, yeah, then it's got to be McDonald's. Okay. If you're talking about America, then it's definitely either In and Out Burger or Wendy's. Because um, Jimmy John's as well is good. Jimmy John's yeah, sandwiches. I have nice. Wendy's. Not really Why is Wendy's better than In and Out? No. Wendy's better than In and Out because of their nuggets. They actually make chicken out of chicken nuggets. So it's proper chicken. Nah, oh, in and Out awesome. burger wins. In and Out's amazing. In and Out just don't have nuggets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Sorry. But that's they why I love about In and Out burger. In and Out don't have nuggets. Simple nuggets. You know, it's just burger chips. That's why it wins. It's amazing. What's your favorite? Yeah, I would go with well, America In and Out burger here. Oof. Fish and chips. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Really. You're normal it's just, yeah. It's just, yeah. I should have that last night. Yeah. Chips. Yeah. That's yeah. all it is. Yeah. They're just I'm gorgeous. McDonald's I'm the same thing. over here. It's just, every it's time I walk chips. past one, it's just intoxicating. It really is. And my, my, lo- <laughs> I'll give you one. Only recently, it's I've a been. Girl that's been on a diet since she's fit now. Anyway. We, we um, <laughs> pretty much the, the one chipper that's in uh, my area here where I live in London. And every time we come home, the pub, it's the go-to place to get your kebabs and your chips. So we all do that. The guy knows us really well for it. We've been on tour for a long time. I've come home. I haven't been there in months. And he says, "Yo, Mark, I haven't seen." you in a while I'm like cool dude how you doing make my order come out I was so disgusted he changed the chips oh no oh really he changed them from the hand <laughs> cut no 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 oh, he changed skinny. from the great ones he changed from the normal ones. hand cut chips what to American style skinny ones you know this ones? skinny like frozen skinny fries what's he doing I, I honestly I know I don't normally do this did you go back in I went back in and I had to talk to him I, I'm like dude yeah. Cannot come back in here anymore he was you've, ruined ruined pain, man. you've ruined my whole experience you really have I'm, <laughs> I'm ashamed of you guys what did you say to him I did. Good on you. Yeah. Absolutely. Is he gonna, he's going to go back? He said it was for budget reasons and all that stuff. No, I decided I'll invest in the chipper if I have to. I don't care. But just bring the chips back. I don't care <laughs> what happens. It's mad. I'm not coming back off tour to eat frozen chips. Yeah, That's not happening. Well, I have a nice chipper. But so I had fish and chip last night, actually, in my place beside me. It's like what yours was. So you, you can pop up and have a fish <laughs> and chip. Yeah. Why would I go for me local? Me local <laughs> chipper. I know, that's terrible. <laughs> it was really good because I had chips there when I was really proper. Like, like having chips in Dublin. Really good. It's great. This has got weird, this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Katie wants to know, what songs are you most excited for us to hear from the new album? Which ones are you really excited I'd about? I'd be really excited for people to hear um, a song called Man on a Wire, um, another song called Energy Never Dies, mm-hmm. um, a song called Never Seen Anything Quite Like You. There's Why probably those three. ones? But Man on a Wire, because it's a story song. Okay. Um, there's a documentary called Man on, Man on Wire. Um, that was out that basically I don't know if you know about this guy he's a French guy went to America went to New York went to the um, the World Trade Centres when they were still there yeah. and shot an arrow across from one to the other with a line on it tied the line and tightrope walked in between the two towers oh my god on his own like him and one of his accomplices anyway so we watched this documentary and just thought it was fantastic why he did it what, where he did it what was going what, on did he do, was he like any oh, safety? No, 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 no safety nothing. Or nothing. Just had just like one bar, I don't the actual, it, the actual it rope itself. <laughs> and uh, he, done, he walked there, he was there for a few hours doing it. You know, wow. It was incredible to see him. He lay down on the rope in the mid between the two. Everybody on the streets were looking at this guy going like, what is he doing? So we got turned around and asked the question, why? Why did he do this? And it was like, what would drive a man to do something like this? And we all came up with the equation of a woman. He was yeah. probably doing it. He built the biggest bridge in the world to try and get over someone. So yeah. we ended up, we wrote Or this. impress her. Yeah, or impress her. Do, you he know, probably did like both. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> he didn't kill himself anyway, though, thank God. <laughs> so um, so we wrote a song um, based on that, you oh, know. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a, it's a beautiful, picturesque song. Yeah. Um, and then The Energy Never Dies. The Energy Never Dies is about um, where do we go when this is all gone? You know, when you're, 
when you're standing there beside someone's someone's bed, maybe they're maybe they're dying, maybe you won't see them again. You're uh, you know the the last line in the chorus is when you know your days are numbered and you're looking in my eyes. Well, it's not the end because the energy never dies. So okay, it's like because we believe that, but we genuinely believe that we are more than the sum of our parts. Yeah. That whereas if, if you believe in God or you don't, the energy is going somewhere. Yeah. You know your molecules or whatever it is, your frequency, you're going somewhere else. And I believe we will all be united back in one at the end of the day. So I think it's an important message for people who feel a bit lost or um, feel that maybe there is nothing out there that you will, you know, that I think the energy, the energy never dies. Well, that, that's going to hit home with a lot of people, that's why yeah. I guess then, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's I think so, be- yeah. It's delivered in it like a, when I want to say pop track, it's delivered like an up-tempo. But when you listen to the lyrics, you'll realise, hang on a minute, there's something more in this, you know. Do you like doing I've, ones like that, that sort of sound a bit upbeat yeah. and then there's like a I've bit... I've always liked I that think, about um, pop music in general. Surprise. Because it, it can sound like pop music, but also if there's a great message in there, um, I love that. Love when you know you kind of go, you're kind of dancing along to it next to the body. And then you're like, oh, you hang on a minute. And you're like, that's really <laughs> can deep. really change a song. Yeah, kind it of, really you know? can. I mean, even even that song, rude. Oh, I know yeah. magic, but magic you know, rude. It, yeah. Even that song, I think a lot of people hear that song and think it's such a happy, yeah. you know, but the guy's talking about going to a girl's like, dad and asking like, can he marry his daughter? He's like, no. But until you read the lyrics or actually listen to what he's saying, I find yeah. that really interesting about music, you know? Yeah, mm. I love it. Yeah, and what was the third catching. one you said? Uh, was a song called Never Seen Anything Quite Like You. Yeah. Uh, this is probably, I am not say like one for for the ladies, but it's that moment where you've seen somebody in their, in the, in everything. You know, I've, I've seen you in jeans with no makeup on. Yeah. Uh, I've seen you like let's say the scape, scope of a life so you might have been hanging around together as kids and seeing a snotty faced little girl yeah. you were still in love with her and then you went to the teenage prom together and you know your dress wasn't really that nice and you had braces and you're coming down the stairs but he's still looking at her up the stairs like she's the most beautiful girl in the world yeah. fast forward to when they got married and uh, you know he's seen her dressed in white on what a woman would class as maybe the most beautiful she should look in her yeah. life but if you fast forward again to 30, 40 years into the future and you've got maybe they're 50, 60 years old and, you know, it's time for tea and she's walking down the stairs and he just looks up the stairs. And on this day where it's 40 years past what she would believe is her best, he still looks at her like she's the most beautiful thing walking down that stairs. So that's that's um, that's what the song is about. It's about that, that feeling of love. I'm not saying everlasting, but lifelong love. Yeah. Because I think that's kind of lost from today's uh, rhetoric or, you know, people's words. But that type of love, I believe, still exists and it's out there. So we just like to write about things. Maybe we're, we want to aspire to it uh, or we're still looking for it. Yeah. But um, but that's what the song's about. It's a really, really, really touching song that means a lot to us. You guys are going to have me in tears over here. What are you doing? No, you dumps her at the end of the song. It's awesome. Oh. After 40 <laughs> years, he's like, yeah, he's you're minging them out here. Yeah, I've never seen quite, anything quite like you. Yeah. Now you're rotten. You're in rides. this. <laughs> Swappy for now a new I've model. all this money. <laughs> okay. Uh, how many uh, guitars does Mark own? That's from CZ uh, Script Family. No, I'm, I'm up near 40 now, I think. Are you? Yeah, because Where are they all? Um, well, generally we've got two rigs that travel around the world, uh, and one is we've got an A and B rig. So we've got an A rig which will stay with us. As in, when I say rig, I mean all the equipment and stuff for us to do a show somewhere. Yep. And then of course we have to uh, jet off somewhere else to to play another show. So the B rig has to go ahead of us. So fortunately, <laughs> I, I've doubled my collection. Wow, that's <laughs> yeah. incredible, isn't yeah. it? And so do you keep adding to it? Yeah, every every couple of weeks I keep you buying it. another guitar. Yeah, can't help it. Okay, same person wants to know. Uh, what would your superpowers be if you were superheroes? Invisibility. Invisibility. Obvious reasons. <laughs> I was, we were to rob the bank, of course. Oh, yeah, to rob a bank. We That's what you want to do. Opposite of superpowers would be what would be the, the worst superpower to have? What would be the in worst a, power? In a life-threatening situation. <laughs> I have one. I have a real superpower. What is what it? it? Mine is right now. I've really realised this, and this is going to sound weird, but I might go talk to somebody about it. <laughs> Mine is technology doesn't work around me. Oh, really? If you want a phone signal, don't stand next to me. That's all I'll say. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, There's you're someone, giving off radiation. I, I must give up a weird vibe to text, not technology because it's <laughs> not remote it's not controls for TV. Same Nothing's thing. Nothing's happy around me. I've, I've just discovered that I'm not breaking the things. I'm not doing nothing wrong with them. I'm not. I'm. I do all the right things for them. You know, run all the. The virus software, computer and I do as all well. That, I do all that stuff. <laughs> they don't like me. Technology does not work that's around mad. me, so it sucks. That's the strangest thing ever. But it's my it's my worst superpower to have, isn't it? Yeah, that's it's my your... anti. You can turn off machines and just stand out. beside them. Yeah. What wow. would yours be? A uh, crap superpower would be Wee Man. <laughs> and that's not the first, his the first sign of trouble. <laughs> I just go just and just 
Because a carpentry, is a carpentry <laughs> has to weigh himself and you have to all swim <laughs> to get no the car. Oh my god! <laughs> just like, <laughs> like what a here is doing, like a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> Although it would distract from everything, I guess. So yeah. If you were in a fight, yeah. it might work. Uh, if there was a fire, it may work. Fairness, I think all the superheroes are have the same problem. Right. Why do they all have diapers? <laughs> Why are they all wearing their pants on the outside? <laughs> It's weird. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it is strange, that, mm-hmm. isn't it? I've never really thought mm-hmm. that through. <laughs> they're always loners. It's really weird. No, they're not. They get all the birds. Uh, they get one bird. They only get one bird. Yeah, it's because they only want one bird. But they could have all They the could have all of the birds that they want. But they don't. They, they want just one bird. don't Pick a Superman to. flying around the world and he wants one chick. And she's not that great looking, let's be fair. <laughs> She was never that great looking. Oh, really? Superman, oh. <gasps> Superman the, the, the girl Superman was after, the pick of the but world. Well, Lois think about Lane it. He could fly sexy. anywhere in the world, right? He could go anywhere in the world, and he chose. Yeah, he but he could see. He, just he could see inside it. her and see what she had inside as no. as a, as a no, spiritual no, being. Right, you know? I think she's super on the inside. I yeah, do you know what I'm saying? She has a lovely, <laughs> she's she's a lovely, lovely personality. And she's not got a great personality. Oh, and Superman geez. chose shallow, horrible man. Yeah, yeah. He didn't choose someone good. <laughs> Christine wants to know what was your highlight of 2014 so far. Oh, try to see. Um, What's the standout moment? Has there been anything like when when you're on tour in America? Was there a moment when you're like? For me personally, it was. It really completing this record because it, it, the whole year has been about completing a record I'm wondering are we going to have a record out this year because we couldn't answer that question for anybody um, all we you could must s- have known you were going to get something no out. no no, no, no really no, didn't know. even like Ryan Tedder's song was the one that we uh, wrote with him was that was the last song to go on really it almost didn't make it yeah the album no was kind of mastered the song was, it was mastered everything so we, we were at a real junction whether to go like will we release this week the week after the next week or we just postpone it till next year um so we were lucky, you know, we were lucky that we just knuckled down and that's why we were being on stage recording, on yeah. stage recording, because we want, really wanted to have music out this year because we feel it's been... I, 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 get, long, yeah. I feel a, an incredible sense of relief when we finish a record because yeah. I, I guess I don't know it, but I'm worried slightly the whole way along and it's, I, I worry about detail stuff that I shouldn't worry about and I kind of overwork my brain and that stuff. Someone that, needs to take it off you. Yeah, and, and when they did, now, I, Mark, I feel away. this sense of just... Wow, we're done with that. It's like a thorn out my side. I'm, it's complete. And, yeah. And what date you. was that then when it was all finished and complete? Um, well, remember? it was the last couple of dates of the One Republic tour. So I think we just had hit Florida um, about two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Wow, it was, we, really, it was we that recent. On, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It was, it was, the, the pre-order was even up online and we oh, hadn't no, put the last song. Oh, no, you guys were like, oh, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> stop ordering so it. So that's, that's <laughs> what we, we'd started to do things like adding in intros and outros to some of the songs. But if you give iTunes the album, and you change, you can't change the timing on it. So you like it has to go up with the timing on it. So we literally, we were in interviews doing uh, like, when's the new album? Oh, it's coming out in September. We literally hadn't even finished the album uh-huh. yet. We, I still had like two songs to vocal to mix. Oh to, my gosh, you guys are crazy! Yeah, we we're, we're sh- already on. Like, yeah, it's, it's going to yep. be out next week. Better than ever. Positive face. Yeah, we just we, <laughs> we convinced ourselves, and again, more pressure until it actually it was um, taken from our hands, and you knew then that we were making the deadline. Yeah. And everything. Did I actually? Relax. I remember getting home and thinking, I think I need to go for a drink or something, or just go out and celebrate. <laughs> something. I don't know why, but I just feel that way. You know, you know, yeah. that weight that gets. I remember listening talking. to it over religiously. Like when you get these songs, because you hear the first mix. Let's say it could have been two years ago. Mm. One of the songs, and you listen to it over and over and over. So I've probably heard all of the songs at least two hundred, three hundred times from start to finish as you're shaving the songs down and mm. doing stuff. But since the day it was taken out of our hands, we listened to every like master and mix and everything coming in. And then there was one day where it was like, right, the album's finished. I haven't listened to it since. Haven't you? No. No, mm-hmm. no. Just, I'm going to wait until now. it's out. Yeah. And now I'm going to start to see where it's coming at me from. If it's on radio, if it's online, I just want to see. I really enjoy that kind of part. Yeah, kind of hearing it and the, and that moment where it yeah. just pops up in someone's car. I know or exactly yeah. what it sounds like yeah, because yeah, yeah. we've slaved over it for the past yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, t- year, I suppose. Um, but now I just I like to see where it's where it's going to start cropping up and popping up. Elements of surprise. Yeah, yep. keep something there. Uh, let's get uh, through a few more just so we can get some more people in. Then uh, Nate wants to know Lennon or McCartney. <laughs> Lennon. Lennon. McCartney. I go McCartney. Yeah? Mm. Okay. Um, uh, Manuela wants to know what's the most amazing gig that you've ever played? Uh, I think the Aviva Stadium in Ireland. We played to our, in our hometown, 53,000 yeah. people, I think it was, which yeah. is like we filled it. It was our gig. Yeah. Uh, that, I love great memories of that. You know, just the, the day before, everybody 
they didn't mean to wind us up but people were like this is your <laughs> biggest gig ever you know um, and there was a lot of nerves involved and excitement and stuff and it was just a, such a mix of emotion going to go out and trip over or something yeah you worry silly. about that actually oh, walking yeah. out to the, to the yeah, drum kit I always that worry that that, that little walk would be just ruined the whole gig yeah, would be just scary. I fell um, but it was so to be actually on the stage four songs in looking at, out at all the people that, that were there and had showed up for us it was uh it was a really special moment, you know. Was that the same for you guys? Do you agree? Mine was um, a sh- uh, was when we played um, a, a, fest- a festival in Ireland called Oxygen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the first time we played it because what, I, what I, we didn't know was they had cameras live backstage and we didn't know they were on us. And I guess we were doing our usual rituals, warming up, warming up. But the whole screen's in front. I didn't realise everyone was watching Oh, no, us, everyone was. But I didn't know that. <laughs> and, um, so I'm cursing all over the place and freaking out because just worrying about I usual things. I terrified. Things. I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> did they think that it was like a skit and like you were doing a maybe skit? Like, I maybe I don't know. <laughs> it was I don't so know over the top. They were like, that can't be real. But I was, I was so, I was so worried that I, I kept kind of peeping out through the curtains, thinking, are people going to show up? I don't know if people are going to show up. You know, I just don't know. And then, you know, it got to the point where I couldn't for like an hour beforehand. I was just worried. I just kept thinking. You know, we haven't been in Ireland for a while. I just, I just don't know. It's our first album, really. Oh, no way. Uh, that, honestly, God, that's what it was. Because when you're in a band, you, you, it's like being in the, the centre of the, a twister, you know, or a tornado. You don't... It's really calm inside and you don't really spend your time thinking about what everyone else thinks of your band, yeah, you know? So you live kind of from your perspective. So to me, I didn't know anyone was going to show up at, a fe- at this festival to see us. And then it was, it was like 75,000 people when we walked out. More than enough. It was... <laughs> I couldn't believe it. it. It went from, you know, that the usual zero thinking and putting yourself down to absolutely like you say more than enough and <laughs> to me that was a, a really special gig I mean we subsequently then won an award for that particular That's right. show so, oh, wow. okay, yeah brilliant. so I'm proud of that because we rehearsed yeah. so much and for our so live shows and so also it's reassuring that that moment really did feel that good if yeah. you won yes. an award for it after yes. it, was, oh, yeah, it wasn't yeah. just yes. in your yeah. head yeah. Yeah. other yeah. people yeah. thought it was yeah. that great yeah. too yeah. It, was, it was a great show <laughs> we've got <laughs> proof <laughs> we, accepted that, we accepted that award in the same category as you two, you two wow. yeah. the 360 tour so they played Crow Park three nights in a row, 200 million spent on the production. Yeah. We'd gone on in Oxygen, middle of the day, six o'clock, with no a lights. Oh, you know, no lights. Yeah. They had the claw, I had the sweaty pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we ended up, yeah, we, 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 we took it off YouTube. It was right? very special uh, award to get. Very proud of that award. Brilliant. Okay, we'll do a few more. Uh, Laura Elizabeth wants to know, what's your advice for someone who wants to be a musician like you guys? Uh, I'd say save the money you're going to spend on guitar strings and go buy a lottery ticket because there's more chance of you making it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, that's positive. I'm totally joking. That's what Mark's been saying that for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest, you know, uh, practice, be prepared to get no's. Um, you know, we've had thousands and thousands of no's in mm-hmm. our in our, in our our uh, past before. Um, but just keep going. You know, I think time is, uh, is something that, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you've been at this for two years or three years or four years. Well, the, the more time you were at it, the better you do get at it. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, perseverance, absolute perseverance in whatever it is. If it's singing, practice every day. If it's writing, practice every day. If you want to get on the radio, listen to the radio. Yeah. And, and try and emulate, not the songs, but the formula that you can hear on there, structure-wise. Okay. Excellent advice really for people. Um, what's the most embarrassing thing you've done on stage, says Lisa? Who's the most embarrassing? I've had everything it? happen to me. Have you? I've forgotten lyrics. Remember, remember one that you bust your whole trousers and they ripped all the way your knee? Oh, it's a classic yeah. trouser bust. That was a no, good no, no, no. I, I, I did probably... F- it, a couple of songs doing it as well, I did yeah. a couple of songs with... Um, actually, my fly was down. Oh, no. For the first three songs. And I That's noticed right. after the third song, and I was so, I was so shocked that it was down... But I was also more shocked at the audience and nobody had told me. I literally was like, no, my flight's been down for three times and none of you has told me. Like, no, <laughs> not no, one of no. you told me. Not even you. Not maybe you haven't time. been doing nobody enough moving me. about. I don't know, maybe just no one was looking at the cross you could, you could feel it, feel a breeze in there. <laughs> I've totally got my position in the script wrong there. Uh, no, you know what? There they were waiting for you to go through the crowd. That's what it was. That's why they were keeping quiet. <laughs> no, no, they were no. like, shh, well, she's going to do that bit I've in a minute. I've myself waiting in anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Funny wants to know, uh, when can we see you live in the UK again, apart from uh, iTunes Festival? Um, when's after that? Have you got any plans? Like we say, when we, we put the album out in two weeks' time, and we, usually what we like to do, instead of taking things for granted, we, usually, we have a lot of dates held for ourselves, but, you know, until we see that this album kind of beds itself in and people actually genuinely Get a reaction, have, yeah. have a demand for this band, there's no point in us putting on a massive uh, concert. So what okay. we decided to do is just see how the album does when it comes out and uh, and hit the green light on uh, on a UK tour. Um, well, so from what you've said and well. what we've heard, it's going to be amazing and we can't wait to Please hear God, it. Please God, hopefully so will. Thank you for coming in today, guys. We're going to go back in there, see where your single Excellent. gets to today. Ooh. Don't dun, get dun, to dun, it. Dun, dun. <laughs> Straight in at number in. 79. It's the script. <laughs> it oh my God. Be. It won't be. Thank you for joining in. Everyone, you. you can watch it back at bigtop40.com later on. Thank you, the script.